Hey guys, what's up? Today I'm back with Radical Reggie. How's it going, buddy? Good, man. How are you doing? I'm great. Thanks for asking. So today we're gonna rank all of the Vanillaware games from worst to best, but only the ones that got a North American release. All right, let's begin. Okay guys, like we said at the beginning, we won't be covering the Japan-only games, there's only two of them, which are uh, Kumantachi and Grand Knight's History, the latter being fan-translated and it's pretty good. And there's also this first game that Vanillaware made under a different name called Fantasy Earth Zero, that's an MMORPG, I haven't played it, Reggie hasn't played it, so we can't exactly rank it. So the games we're gonna rank today are the five Vanillaware games that got a North American release. And we're gonna start with number five, which is Muramasa. Uh, Mur wow. Muramasa, Muramasa the Demon Blade was originally released on the Nintendo Wii. Much to everybody's surprise, uh, I, I, didn't, I never thought it was a good idea because we were used to having Vanillaware games on Sony consoles, but I still played the game for a little bit at a friend's house, and I gotta say, I was impressed and I loved it. But by the time I first played that game, uh, the PS Vita remake, or rather remaster, it's not exactly a remake, it just looks better and has better interfacing controls, called Muramasa Rebirth, I was mm. flabbergasted, man. I was so amazed by how good it was, the controls were great, and playing this game on your PS Vita with the OLED screen, oh man, it just looked beautiful. It's a beautiful <laughs> game. The only letdown, I mean, the reason why we ranked this game on number five, I mean, it is what you could say the worst Vanillaware game, but the worst being, you know, still a freaking amazing game. It's because well, number one, it's too damn short. There's two characters to choose from, the guy and the girl, and each route takes up to like four or five hours to complete. If you want to do absolutely everything, it's probably six or seven hours. So it's just too short. And at times it doesn't really feel like a true role-playing game. I do consider this game as an action RPG, but at the same time, I never argue when somebody doesn't consider it as such. What do you consider this game as? Well, here's the thing with that game. So I I kind of put it down. Well, I played it on the Wii for a second, then I kind of put it down. Yeah. Uh, I had experienced another Vanillaware game that we'll get to later, but <laughs> when I played that game, I was expecting the same kind of experience by playing Miramasa, but Miramasa was not, it was kind of light on story. It was good on gameplay, but it didn't pull me in. And then the fact that it was on the Wii kind of threw me off because, you know, I felt like it should have been on the PS2. And I think they were, maybe they were trying to cash in by putting it on the Wii. I'm not really sure, but it would have sold a lot better if it was on the PS2, in my opinion. Um, when the Vita version came out, I was ready to play it. And I got pretty far in to it, but I did put it down. I lost interest for some reason. I think at the time, if I played it like earlier, I would have probably got through it. Like I would have got through the game, but at the time I just, it just didn't pull me in. I needed a stronger story uh, with that game. The art style was great. It looks fantastic, but the story, you got to pull me in with some story. Yeah, I agree. You know, the story is all right, but it doesn't really stand out, especially not against all the other games that we're about to see in this list. So it's right. not exactly a game you play for the story. But that's it, that's Muramasa Rebirth, and speaking about story, that leads us to Dragon's Crown, which has the exact same problem. Like, excellent yes. gameplay, but you don't really play this game for the story, because it's mostly quest-driven. But anyway, mm -hmm. number four, Dragon's Crown. Dragon's Crown, uh, that game is kind of funny because it's like, um, it's, it's, it's like, it was supposed to be like, kind of like, I don't want to say it was like a like connection with Dungeons & Dragons type the arcade game, but it, it felt like it was, um, I don't know, it's, the art design for me in that game threw me off with some of the characters, like the Amazon music. <laughs> it looks insane. I'm like, whoa. And then with the, the game looks so good that yeah. when you have four players playing that game, I mean, it looks beautiful, but it gets confusing because, you know, you have four players going against all those enemies. It, it could be pretty crazy. But it is really an awesome game. But don't expect going into it with a story. Um, it does have a, a really good leveling up system, you know, how you build your characters up and stuff. and how you could bring certain characters back to life and stuff like that. But whoa, those character designs, that's that's what always comes to mind when I think of Dragon's Crown, the character design that game. This is like, whoa. <laughs> now that you mentioned uh, Dungeons and Dragons, it does have a little bit to do with it because George Kamitani worked, he was a designer of um, Shadow Over Mystara. 
Oh, okay. The yeah, he worked, he worked on there. So he loved his work in there so much that he wanted to do a spiritual successor, but Capcom wouldn't let him. So years later, we got Dragon's Crown, which was actually going to be the first Vanillaware game. He, really? He had been working on Dragon's Crown since forever, but you know, he kept missing the chance. He decided to work on other games first, Fantasy Zero, the MMORPG being the first one, and then he finally moved to other games. But anyway, uh, Dragon's Crown, either version you play is fantastic, PS4 uh, enhanced poor roots, freaking beautiful, strongly recommended this game, but just, you know, it's not a game you'll play for the story. All right. No. So, <laughs> number three, number three is a game that it's not really an RPG, it does have some RPG elements. I've covered this game a few times in my channel, and I love this game to pieces, and Reggie, you love it as well, too. Yes, I do. It, it is a fantastic game. Grim Grimoire. <laughs> that game, to me, so here's the thing with that game. Uh, when I first, I got it, it came out the same time as another Vanillaware game that we'll get to. And I remember like playing this game, I was like, man, I'm not gonna get into this. And then the way the story was told in that game and how the art style looked, yeah. it pulled me in. And I'm telling you guys, if you play Grim Grimoire, I mean, don't let the cover fool you. I mean, this game is amazing because the story in this game it just, all I can really say, I don't want to spoil it for people, but it takes a twist that you will not expect. And I'm like, whoa, dude, this is insane. Um, I love this. I love the game for its story. I thought they did a brilliant, brilliant job with it. Um, and I'll never forget it for that. You know, that's a story. That's a game that'll stick with me because of how the story was. And the gameplay may seem a little bit simplistic. It kind of reminds me of kind of like Lemmings in a way. If you guys remember Lemmings from back in the day. But that's okay, though, because the story pulls you in and you you want to get through it and it's, it's just an amazing experience so remember more i mean eric how'd you feel about it when you played it well i love the game but i i do have i don't think it's as simple as you say at the beginning it is simple but then you get more creatures to control then yeah. more rooms to take care of and it it, it it starts getting complicated but fortunately it's a game that holds you by the hand since the beginning the tutorials are pretty explicit pretty well explained so you understand the game uh, very fast. It's a real-time strategy RPG, uh, which is also a tower defense because you're protecting your runes from where your elemental creatures are cast off. And it's very addictive, you know. I played this game and I loved it from the start. I agree with you with the story bits. At the beginning it was like, ah, it seems like a dumb story, I'm not gonna get into it, but the gameplay looks uh, pretty much addictive to me, so I kept going thanks to that, and eventually, like you said, the story pulled me in, and it yeah. didn't let me go. It's a fantastic story, fantastic gameplay, strongly recommended. I don't think this game is expensive nowadays, but if, unfortunately, it's still an exclusive to the PlayStation 2. It's the only way to play it, sadly. Yeah. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of people don't even know it exists, probably. I, I wish there was a way they could probably get it out there and make it like come out for PS4 as, as you know, digital or something, but we'll see what will happen in the future. Exactly. Maybe it'll happen. All right, number two is Vanillaware's most recent game, most recent masterpiece. It went under a lot of people's radars, and that's so unfair because we don't want this game to be a hidden gem or underrated. We want this to be as popular, and that is 13 Sentinels, Aegis Rim. This yep. is, oh my god, I beat this game like, I don't know, three <laughs> months ago, probably less, and I fell in love with it right from the start, just like Green Grimoire, well no, the opposite of Green Grimoire, the, the story in Green Grimoire pulls you in later in the game, the more you play, the more it pulls you in, but 13 Sentinels, it pulls you right from the start, because it's so unique, it's told through 13 different protagonists, 13 different points of view, and you gotta play through all of them, but it's totally worth it, totally worth it. Uh, it doesn't waste your time with, uh, there's some, uh, of course there's some humor here and there, some anime tropes in there. After all, uh, most of the characters are high school students, but that's okay because this, the story is so serious, so psychological, so obscure, so dark, you know, it, it gets darker the more you advance, and well, the battle system is uh, most people's gripe with the game. It's once again, it's a real-time strategy RPG, and right. it's like it plays in this top-down view perspective from like quite above. So mm -hmm. you you don't see the mechs the characters are controlling. You you see like these small uh, I don't want to call them sprites because they're not. You know, this just <laughs> <laughs> whatever the hell they are. 
and but it's so addictive at the beginning it's kind of confusing like grim remorse but the game is well explained it isn't that hard at the beginning so you have plenty of time to get into the game to get acquainted with the mechanics and finally abuse the battle mechanics which are pretty damn awesome so what's your experience with this game man okay so i actually really like the battle system in the game i thought it was fine i i enjoyed it i mean it kind of the way the characters talk between each other during battles it, it stays so interesting so that I actually really liked it a lot, but one of the things I really liked about this game was how you actually really liked the characters in it. Uh, the voice acting is really well done in this game. Um, I know the game came out with a day one, well, I don't know if it was day one patch or a patch later, but they had the, 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 you had to download the English voice acting into the game because it wasn't able to go into the final project or product. But um, it's just really well done and you really feel like you're getting to know these characters. You know, you just it's just a really good experience. Um, uh, one thing they did well in this game is like getting you to like these characters because you will like all these characters. They, they are amazing. Uh, going to the story and everything like that, I like the way the story was told because uh, it won't let you, it won't, it, it tells you in different perspectives pretty much I would say. But it's like, um, I want to say, it, it could uh, it could get kind of weird, but it's still good though. But yeah, that's all I really have to say about it. <laughs> all right, man. So what's number one? What's number one, man? Number one, man, you already know what it is, man. Odin Sphere, yes, is here. Yeah. This is, the, <laughs> this is the first VanillaWare game I played, and that this this it is that was a great experience. Odin Sphere is such a good game, and this is the kind of quality uh, that I expected from VanillaWare uh, after playing after playing this game, going into their other games. So, uh, Miramas and Dragon's Crown fell short on story, but this one right here. Is an amazing story, and it's told through. I think it was five characters: Mercedes. I, I'm trying to remember everybody's name, but um, uh, okay, I, I got the names. I got the names. It's Gwendolyn, the first one, the Valkyrie. Uh, then it's Cornelius, the prince, turning to a rabbit. Well, a, Puka, a Puka, actually. Mercedes, uh, the fairy princess. Oswald, the shadow knight, and yeah, finally yeah. the sexy velvet. <laughs> man you know what's funny about that game my favorite character in that game is actually odin i love oh, odin. yeah odin is, is, is tight man I, I love the way they made him look in this game and i love that scene he had when he was going against the fairy queen uh when he had the, the what, what was it uh his weapon was called the um baylor baylor, baylor yeah baylor, that big orb that orb is sick when he used that against her that scene is amazing but it was such a good game, guys, and I love that they remade it and made it more of an action game. Uh, because when it was on PS2, I remember there was a problem of your character like kind of getting tired and everything yeah. when you were trying to attack. So they thought that they took that out of this new versions and made them more action oriented. So, what do you think about the game? And what's your experience? Well, I love it. I told my experience a million times here. People know I'm a die-hard fan of the game. I keep recommending it at every single chance I get. Masterpiece. Beautiful graphics, beautiful art style, the music is fantastic, and the controls are great. They were great in the PS2 vanilla version, but they are greater in the remake. And there's more exploration, the dungeons are a little bit longer, but it's more fast-paced, more friendly. It's a game that I do recommend playing on normal or hard, because on easy it's just too easy, actually. Because the vanilla version on the PS2, I've said it before, it's very hard. It can, bet, it can get very hard even on easy mode because of the fact that you get tired so often and you gotta go away and recharge and it's just a pain in the ass so i love the original ps2 version don't take me wrong but the playstation 4 remake ps3 also on ps vita fantastic game masterpiece strongly recommended and that's it guys that's it this is our ranking of vanillaware games what is yours let us know in the comment section below and in the meantime thank you guys for watching and thank you very much once again reggie for being on the show Bye, man. See you later. All right. See you next time.